it's our pleasure this time. I don't need to go through a long introduction. They say, here is Maxine Warren. Well, here we are, and I'm so delighted uh, to be here with you this morning uh, to celebrate Juneteenth. Of course, we normally do the Kingdom Day Parade, uh, doing Black History Month, but, you know, with creativity and with thinking about what we can do uh, to honor, you know, our history and the lives of our ancestors, we come up with ways by which we do it and we include the community in remembering who we are and what we are. So thank you so very much for having me here this morning. I just want to first remind you of the history. This is all about, Juneteenth is all about the celebration of the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. It was in 1863 that the proclamation was signed, but our people did not get notice of it until two and a half years later over in Galveston, Texas. And so they got it late, but they celebrated. They celebrated because this was supposed to be the end of slavery. Well, slavery didn't really end because slavery remained in this country far beyond the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. And we've been struggling with that every set. And we're struggling with it today. First of all, let me just say that I recognize for many of us, this is a very difficult time in this country. We're all dealing with the pandemic. And the pandemic has, in many ways, changed our lives change the way we think about health, change the ways we think about what we do when there's such a thing as a pandemic where we have to follow some new rules. We have to do things in ways we've never done. And it had a negative impact on our economy. So many of our small businesses had to close down. Uh, they had to let their employees go. And we lost a lot of lives. My sister died. Many of you have relatives that have died you know, friends that have died, but we're strong people. We're determined people, and we're going to fight this pandemic, and we're going to do everything that we can to get back to a more normal way of life. But on top of that, on top of the pandemic, we are now fighting inflation. The price of everything is higher. Gasoline is off the scale. The food prices in the supermarkets are way beyond what we're accustomed to paying. But you know, as I thought about it, and being the chair of the Financial Services Committee of the Congress of the United States, in talking about and dealing with inflation, I had to say to my colleagues, you know what? I have to tell you, black people have been managing inflation all of our lives. We are the victims of those who exploit us in our communities. They look for ways by which to do payday loans with extraordinary interest. They look for ways to increase the prices in these food deserts where we don't have the supermarket we should have. They look for ways to deal with us and charge us more interest rates for our mortgages because we have a desert of banks in our community. And so we know about inflation. We've dealt with inflation. We deal with it every day. And so yes, we're going to join in the economic remedies that come out of the FEC and other places, but that is going to cause us some problems because in order to contain inflation, you raise the interest rate. Now that doesn't sound like it makes good sense, but that's what the economists have organized, this is what they do, and we've got to deal with it. And the way you deal with inflation is, stop buying stuff you don't need it. Be conservative with your money. Get beyond what is being done to increase difficulties in my life. 
And so, while we're dealing with the pandemic, we are dealing with inflation. Our democracy is at stake. Our democracy is at stake, right. and it was started with Trump. Yes. Trump started the division. Not only that, he aligned himself with Putin uh, in Russia, and they hacked into our Democratic National Committee, yeah. where our votes were absolutely at risk, and it continues today. Because in many of our states, they have come up with voter suppression law. What is that? It's all about doing away with early voting days. It's all about making sure that the polling places do not are not able to accommodate and all the lines are there to discourage people. It's all about perfect match. When you register to vote in some states, if you don't dot the I and cross the T, the registration is thrown out. And so there are so many ways that voter suppression is going on, created by Trump, and while we were fighting every day for a better quality of life, he was doing and working with his allies in these states to appoint people who deal with the electoral system and many ways by which we don't even know that they are denying our vote. However, I just want to have you understand the democracy is at stake. You have domestic terrorism. Everybody thinks about the enemy from being someplace else, in another country somewhere. But we have, right here in this country, domestic terrorism, and it is in the Proud Boys, you heard about them? The Oath Keepers, you heard about them? The KKK, you've been known about them? And QAnon, and others who are organizing all over the country. Now, I want you to know, the Oath Keepers rode down on my office. They tried to come to my office because they said they wanted to deal with Maxine Waters. And so it got out on the internet, and of course the community showed up. I tried to tell the community, don't allow them to, don't allow them to engage you. But the community said, Ms. Waters, this is not just about you. This is about us. This is about our community. So, I want you to know the Oath Keepers had to tuck their tail in the rock because the people showed up and they said he was not coming into our community in this way. And so, what have we got to do? As we celebrate Juneteenth, we've got to understand the celebration is over and just being happy that you got some information late. We're tired of getting information late. It's time for us to understand that in a democracy that we have to strengthen. This democracy would not be what it is today, but for the civil rights movement. We'd have to make it a better place. But yet, there are those who would deny, those who cannot stand to see us prosper. And so while we're fighting the wealth gap, while we're dealing with the issues of health care, while we're knowing that we've got to clean up these communities from homelessness, they are organizing and they want Trump back in office. And they are organizing to put it back in office. But ladies and gentlemen, I came on and I told the world that he was a dishonorable human being and that he was dangerous. He'll get back in office over my dead body. He cannot have it, he cannot stand it on, and we all want to be prepared to do our part. Register and vote. The vote turnout is pitiful in this primary. We can do better than this. And we've got to send a message to many of our southern states where they're suffering more than we are that we're going to do what we have to do in order to make this democracy work for everybody. Now, I want you to pay attention to the news. The committee that is organized is headed by Billy Thompson that has come on television appointed by Nancy Pelosi to deal with what took place when they invaded our capital. They invaded the capital of the United States of America. They hung a noose because 
Trump told them that they needed to hang Pence, his vice president, because he had not cooperated in stealing the election. They walked the halls looking for Nancy Pelosi. They invaded our office. They came to my office and they wanted to take me and all the members down to one place in another one of the big buildings to be safe. I told those who came to my office, I'm not leaving my office, I'm barricaded in, I don't trust you, I don't trust them, I'm not going with you anywhere, I did not go, and many of the people who went were sorry that they went uh, because of what happened there. So, I share this with you, because I want you to know the truth. I want you to understand what is happening with your government. I want you to know what is happening in your country. I want you to know you pay a huge price. Our ancestors have paid a huge price to make this democracy stronger, and it is not time for us to be get back. It is not time for us to think that somebody else is going to do it. Nobody is going to protect your democracy any more than you are. So are you with it? Yeah. Do you understand what our unity is all about? Yeah. Are you willing to do the struggle? Yes. Yeah. Are you willing to make the sacrifice? Yeah. Are you willing to stand up and say, okay, you brought us here in chains, we didn't ask to come here, but now that we're here, this is ours too, and we're not giving it up.